بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد رب إشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم وفقنا لما تحبه وترضاه السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله Today is uh, the first day of Usul al-Fiqh the, the science which is called Usul al-Fiqh Before we get into the science What I want to do is I want to go over the seerah, the biography of a man That is known to be the first author of the science The reason why I'm going over his biography is for two reasons Or for a few reasons, yani uh, the first reason is Leonardo was studying his madhab. And that man is Imam Al Shafi'i Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Instead of going his going over his biography next week, I decided to go over his biography today. And within his seerah, his biography, we see how the ilm Usul al Fiqh came or how he became the first author of Usul al Fiqh. And from there we'll get into the book, and the book is called Al-Waraqat. The Imam's name is Muhammad ibn Idris al-Shafi'i. Shafi'i is not his grandfather's name. Rather, Shafi'i is a man that lived during the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa His name was Shafi'i. Because of honor, because your grandfather or your great-grandfather was a Sahabi, they called him Shafi'i. Limada, لأنه his great-grandfather believed in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he was from the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, he was born 150 Hijri, A.H. 150 years after the Hijrah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was born in a place called Palestine. Before the Imam was born, his father passed away. And so he was left with his mother. His mother, also being a Qurayshiya, being from the Quraysh, and Muhammad ibn Adrisa Shafi'i, he's also from, the, uh, from Quraysh, she decided to go back to, to Mecca to go live with her family members, her cousins. And so that Imam Ashafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, he can grow up in his, his city um, and he can live with the Quraysh and he can live with his uncles. Imam Ashafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, he grew up very poor. To the point where he says, in some of his narrations, he says, I couldn't afford to buy uh, something to write the Quran on. Because when they were little kids, they would go to what we call nowadays duksi, yani a madrasa. Nowadays we have a kitab. You go to this madrasa with your kitab and you read your portion or your share or whatever the teacher told you to memorize to the teacher and then you go back home. When I came back in the days, they didn't have that. Some, if a kid, he wanted to go to duksi, if he wanted to go to a madrasa, what would he do? He would get a tablet, right? An ink and the sheikh, he would what? He would forbade him, say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And the kid would sit there and he would write, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala was very poor to the point where he, his mom couldn't provide that for him. Walakin his mom still sent him to madrasa. He would sit right next to the sheikh. This would show you yani, the aql, the, the memory the imam had. He would sit right next to the sheikh, and this is him saying it, he would sit right next to the sheikh, and when the sheikh is يعني, doing talqeen, when he's giving a kid his dars, for example, let's say there's a kid sitting in front of the sheikh, and the sheikh is saying, write Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. The kid writes Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Imam al Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala would be sitting right next to the sheikh, and he would memorize Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. The sheikh would say, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ This kid, he would write, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ While he's writing, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala is sitting there and he already memorized this ayah. The, the shaykh would say, اللَّهُ الصَّمَدْ وَمَا إِلَى ذَلِكَ 
The Imam said, I would memorize the ashar, I would memorize the portion that was given to this child before he was finished writing it. Yani you can see the, the memory the Shaykh had at a very young age. And this would continue every day. He would come and he would sit with the Shaykh and he would memorize. He would come and he would sit with the Shaykh and he would memorize. To a point where the Shaykh, يعني, I mean يعني the, the Quran teacher, he said, it is not halal for me. It is not allowed for me to take money from you. Bima'na Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you a gift. Bima'na this is fawq al-ada. This is not something يعني, that you see in little kids. You you will be something special one day. For the you come to this madrasa for free and you learn the Quran. They say Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala he memorized the Quran when he was a little kid. طيب. Now once he memorized the Quran there was a i'ada there was there was a custom back in the days where the parents of a small child they would send their kid to to uh to the outskirts to the bawadi to the bedouins and they did this for a few reasons so uh, the tongue, يعني, the language of the Arab is still preserved in this boy. يعني, there's, there was a lot of people that come to Mecca. The language is being changed. So what do they want? They want to send this boy out to the outskirts so he can, he can live with the tribe and he can learn pure Arabic. The, the mother of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she did the same thing to our Prophet. When he was a little kid, he lived with the, with the tribes. After he stayed with the Bedouins, he traveled with them, he lived with them, he learned their poetry, he learned the, the seer, the biographies of, of يعني, the chiefs and وما إلى ذلك. He, يعني, did dubbed of the Arabic language, he came back to Mecca. And when he came back to Mecca, the scholars that wrote his biography, they said Imam al-Shafi'i, he wasn't studying in the beginning. And when he was a little kid, Imam al-Shafi'i was not studying. Until one day he ran into the Mufti of, uh, of Mecca, Muslim ibn Khalid al-Zinji. Muslim Khalid al-Zinji, he called this young man, he said, come here. He said, what's your name? He's talking to Imam Shafi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, what's your name? Imam Shafi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, Muhammad ibn Idris. So the Mufti, yani Muslim Khalid al-Zinji, the man that's talking to this small child, Ibn Imam Shafi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said to him, where do you live? What neighborhood are you from? He said, I'm from neighborhood so-and-so. Yani he told him the place he lived in, Mecca. He said, طيب. He said, what tribe are you from? He said, I am from the tribe of Matlab. يعني, I am a Matlabi, I am a Qurashi. يعني, يعني, I am proud of this. And so the Mufti, he looked at him and he said, listen, you're a very smart, يعني, you're a very smart child. يعني, and I see you, يعني, going and learning poetry and memorizing all these poems you should focus on fiqh this is the mufti of Mecca telling Imam Shafi focus on fiqh لماذا? لأنه I see something in you and this is the second man in his life that says and looks at Imam Shafi and says I see something in you Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, he started to study as a small child, as a small child. He studied under the Mufti Muslim ibn Khalid al-Zinji. And he also studied from the great muhaddith, from the Salaf, Sufyan ibn Uyayna. He took hadith from Sufyan and he took uh, fiqh from Muslim ibn Khalid al-Zinji. Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, he studied and he continued to study and he continued to study until the Mufti of Mecca allowed him to give fatwa before the age of 15. Tahayyal, Imam Shafi'i before reaching puberty, 
he would sit at the haram. He had a chair. He had a chair at the haram, and he would give fatawa. Grown men would come to him, and they would ask him, "Ya Imam, Ya Sheikh, Ya Fulan, Ya Fata, I have this problem, so and so. What should I do? Do this." He was a mufti before he was a, he was a, he was fifteen years old. Once his uncles. Imam Shafi Ta'ala, his uncles, they seen how intelligent and how smart and how, يعني, how, يعني, how his heart is very pure and how it just يعني, soaks this knowledge up. They said you should go study under uh, Malik ibn Anas. Imam Malik Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Lianu he is Imam Darul Hijra. If you really want knowledge, go study under him. Nalahid. And every time I read Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala's uh, biography, I, I really I love this moment. Limada the Anu Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, he's a mufti. And when we study Usul al Fiqh, we're going to know who a mufti is and who the conditions of a mufti is and the conditions of giving a fatwa or answering questions. Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, before he was uh, 15 years old, before he reached puberty, he was a mufti. And now they're telling him, go study under Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala. You, you can see his ikhlas. He didn't say, la. I'm a mufti now. I don't study under anybody. La. Ah, I got a position in, uh, yani in the haram. I don't study under anybody. La. I'm done studying. He never said that. He said, what should I do? They said, Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala, he wrote a book that's called Al-Muwatta. طيب. Go and study this book from Imam Malik. <sighs> Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, he sat and he thought about this. Excuse me. He thought, he thought about this. And he said, before I go to Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala, I should memorize his book, the Muwatta. Remember. Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala was very poor. So he couldn't find the book or he couldn't write the book. So he borrowed the book. He borrowed the book from someone. And what did he do? He memorized the muwatta before he went to Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala. Now, Imam Malik is very known. Back in the days, until today, يعني, if you go to a great scholar, if you go to a great scholar, for example, there is a scholar that we all know. His name is Sheikh Saleh Al Fawzan. Let's say Ana Abdullah. Today I want to go to Sheikh Saleh Ibn Sheikh Saleh Al Fawzan, and I want to become his student. It is impossible, right? It is impossible for me to knock on his door and say I want to become from your students. لا. لماذا؟ لأنه there's there's ways to go about it. If you want to come to a Sheikh. First, you learn from his students. He gives you one of his his khawas, uh, his students. He teaches you. He starts you from the beginning, right? Let's say the sheikh he's doing sharah on Bukhari. He's giving a commentary on Bukhari. You can't just come and sit and benefit. You can, I mean, you can sit in the masajid. No one's gonna say go or anything. Walakin, you can't be from the students. لماذا؟ لأنه the sheikh he was building these students from Arba'in al Nawawi. And so what is he going to do? He's going to tell you, go learn Arba'in al-Nawwi and Umdatul Ahkam and Umdatul uh, Balugh al-Maram from so-and-so. And then once you get to Bukhari or once you get to Muslim or once you catch up to us, then come sit in my majlis. Walakin, it is very hard for someone to go to a sheikh and say, I'm going to be your student. Abadan, it is very hard. Unless you have a tazkiyah, unless you have a letter from a sheikh to another sheikh. So Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, being a Qurashi, being from the tribe of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, being from the family of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family is the ones that run the government. So some of his uncles, they went to the mayor of Mecca. They said, listen, we want Shafi'i to go study under Malik ibn Anas. We want Shafi'i, yani Muhammad, we want him to become from the students of Malik ibn Anas. 
So what are you going to do? You're going to write a letter for him, right? A letter of recommendation. You're going to write this letter to who? To Malik? La. You're going to write it to the, to the mayor of Medina. And then you're going to tell the mayor of Medina to take this boy to Malik ibn Anis. And Malik, uh, the, the mayor is going to tell Malik ibn Anas, you see this boy right here? Yeah, he is from your students. Intah al-kalam. That's how it works nowadays, sah? Walakin la. Back in the days, that's not how it, that's not how it worked. Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, he got this letter from the mayor of Mecca. He travels to Medina and he goes to the mayor of Medina. And he gives this letter to the mayor. And the mayor, he reads it. It says from the mayor of Yani Wali, from the mayor of Mecca to the mayor of Medina, the Wali of Medina. Take Muhammad ibn Idris al Shafi'i to Sheikh Imam Malik ibn Anas, and he will be from his students. The mayor, he read it, and he looked at Imam al Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, and he said, He said, Wallahi, Wallahi. It is easier for me to walk from Medina to Mecca barefoot. That is easier for me than to take you and to take you to his house and tell Malik ibn Anas, this man, this boy is from your students. I can't. I'm sorry. Abadan. Who's saying this? This is Malik ibn Anas. I mean, this is the mayor of Medina. Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, once he heard this, he says, listen, يعني, no, it's going to be all right. Nothing is going to happen. What's the worst thing that can happen? يعني? He can say, no, sah, tamam, let's go, let's try. Imam Shafi'i, he, he goes, and the mayor of Medina, he calls some guys that some of the guys that he knows, yani the Ashraf, the the businessmen, or you can say the men that are any popular, or yani the men that have any yani, sharaf honor in in Medina. He calls them, and they all go to Imam Malik rahimahullah taala for one reason and one reason only to say Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah taala is going to be from your students. They all go. <coughs> And they knock on the door. A small girl, the maid, the slave girl, she opens the door. She looks at them. And the mayor is the one that's talking. And he said, listen, tell Malik ibn Anas, tell Imam Malik that the mayor is standing outside, come out. She goes back inside. And Imam Shafi rahimahullah ta'ala is the one that's narrating the story. He said she took her time. Bima'na, we were standing outside for a while. She comes back and she said, Imam Malik said, one of two things. If you're looking for an answer, yani if you have a, if you want a fatwa, huh, there's a way to go about it. Write it down. There's a place in the masajid, put it in. When I get a chance, I'll answer it. That's if you want a fatwa. Well, I can, if you come to talk, just to kick it, just to chill, no, it's not the time. There's a time and place for that. Yeah, I mean, this is not the time. Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala's kalam is wadih. He said, okay, if you want a fatwa, there's a way to go about it. If you come to talk, this is not the time to talk. So the mayor, he says to the small girl, he says, listen, go back to him. Tell him there's a letter from the Wali of Medina. I mean, there's a, uh, there's a letter from him, uh, for him from the governor or the mayor of Mecca. Then Imam Malik, she goes back and she tells Imam Malik, rahimahullah ta'ala, and they're still waiting outside. They're waiting for Malik to come out. Imam Malik, he tells a small child or the small girl to put a chair in front of the, in front of the door. She opens the door, she puts a chair down, and then she leaves. Now I want you guys to imagine this. Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, the mayor of Medina, and a few other guys 
standing in front of the door or the house of Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala. In front of them is a chair. What happens? Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala, he comes and he sits down. This chair is not for the governor. This chair is not for the men in the, that's with the governor or the, the, the wali or the mayor. This chair is not for the uh, Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala. No, this is Malik's chair. He comes and he sits down. Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala did not play. And then he, the mayor gave Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala. After he sat down, he gave him the letter. And he read it. And he sees from the mayor of Mecca. We, yani as the family of Quraysh, we want you to teach Muhammad ibn, Shafi, Muhammad ibn Idris as Shafi'i. We want him to become from your students. Harm, there's, not, there's nothing harmful in it, sah? There's nothing wrong with that. Imam Malik, rahimahullah ta'ala, he lost it. Got very, very, very mad. Limada, Leno, he said, Is this how knowledge is sought nowadays? Yani, if he wants to come and benefit from me, does he have to go through all these people? Yani, there's steps, there's a way he has to go through that process. Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala lost it. In order to understand this, ya akhawat. You guys have to understand who Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala is. Imam Malik is the one that they said he would not give tahdith, he would not give out hadith, he would not do talqeen, he would not teach until he was in wudu or until he took a shower. Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala, he respected knowledge. Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala, they said, when he was giving out the hadith, or when the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was being narrated, he did not talk and he did not allow anyone to talk. Limada لِأَنُّ Do not raise your voice over the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is speaking respect. And because of that, and because of that, I believe Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He rose or He raised Imam Malik's status. لِأَنُّ If you respect knowledge, Huh? If you respect the books, if you respect the scholars, if you if you respect the hustle, and if you love it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise you in ranks. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you from the ulama. That's if you respect it. Tamam? Not just throw your book in the in your room when you're done with the dars or just scribble all over the place, right? Your notes are all over the place. La. He respected knowledge. And so now Imam, Imam, Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala is angry. So what does Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala do? Imam Shafi'i, a very smart man. He looks at Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala and he talked to him. He calmed him down. And then once Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala calmed down, what did he do? Imam Malik, he said, come back tomorrow, huh? and I'll have one of my students read and teach you the muwatta. Imam Malik, uh, Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, no, no, I didn't come here so someone can teach me the muwatta. I came here to read the muwatta on you. I know the muwatta, I memorized it. Before I even came here, I memorized it. I know it like the back of my hand. Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Tayyip, I'm going to see you tomorrow. Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, he came to the masajid and he seen Imam Malik. And he sat with him and Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, Iqra, read. And Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, because he is a pure Arab. Because Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, he lived with the Bedouins. Because he spoke yani, Arabic in a way that distinguishes him from yani, people that are not Arab. And he was pure. Yani. And so when he reads the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he reads it the way it's supposed to be read. And so Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala, yani yastamti, yani he is enjoying this. So what does he do? He closes his eyes 
and Imam Shafi rahimahullah ta'ala is reading and every time he stops he says zid continue and Imam Shafi rahimahullah ta'ala reads and he says continue and Imam Shafi rahimahullah ta'ala continues to read and he says continue lima da li'anno a pure arab is reading the hadith the way it's supposed to be read and the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yani it's going straight to the heart of Imam Malik and he's enjoying it yani yastamti yani this is this is what he lives for as a student yani as a person that seeks knowledge yani as a person that that does this for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his iman increases i forgot to mention this yesterday walakin khair there's a hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam where he says man yuridillahu bihi khairan yufaqihu fi ad-din whoever allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants khair for whoever allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for what does he do he gives them understanding of the religion about a book i think 2 years ago or a little bit over that it's written by uh, the famous uh, sheikh Darzaq al-Badr radi al-hadri uh, hafizahullah this book is asbab ziyadat al-iman or ziyadat al-iman the reasons why iman increases or the reasons that increase or the things that increase iman and the things that decrease it the first thing that he came with is talab al-ilm seeking knowledge increases you in knowledge i mean seeking knowledge increases you in iman and i thought about this and i thought to myself how صراحه انا زي حاب يعني somebody studies fiqh if somebody studies usul al fiqh if somebody studies mustalah al hadith if somebody studies mantiq if somebody studies nahwu if somebody studies arabic يعني والله everybody knows these uh, sciences they're jaff they're jammed yani it's very hard for you to increase your iman from from mantiq yani from logic studying philosophy ولكن he says لا i continue to read it and he says this hadith what does it mean if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he wants khair for you yufaqqiquka fi ad-din he teaches or he gives you understanding of the religion bima'na you act upon whatever you learned understanding of the religion is amal there are a lot of people that know a lot of things about islam there are professors here in azhar egypt yani wallahi and everybody will tell you there are professors that teach the sharia that teach hadith well like in outside they smoke and they do their thing لماذا? they know it's a job for them He's been teaching the Sharia. He knows fiqh and Shafi'i in and out, and he's been teaching it for the past fifteen years. When he comes to class, yeah, I and mean, he does not need a book. Everything is right here. He teaches it. What I can this person is a person that smokes. He's a person that listens to uh, music. He's a person that does this and does that. Limada li anno he does not act upon this religion. For thatika Allah subhanahu wa taala does not want khair for this person. The hadith he it says. من يريد الله به خيرا whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants khair for يفقهه في الدين ابن حجر the famous sharih of al bukhari in fath al bari what does he say if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want khair for you he does not give you understanding of this religion and understanding of the re- the religion is al amal bihi acting upon it so imam malik rahimahullah ta'ala not only did he gain knowledge ولكن he acted upon, he acted upon it and so he found this ladha he found this sweetness yani the sweetness of iman and so once he hears the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said this the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said this the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that once he hears this yani he he finds that sweetness in it and so now he has imam shafi rahimahullah ta'ala reading to him and he says to him continue and continue and continue from that day imam shafi rahimahullah ta'ala he became from the students of imam malik 
Imam Shafi'i rahmahullah ta'ala, he became from the students of Imam Malik. And he studied and he was under Imam Malik rahmahullah ta'ala for 10 years. Not one time did he say to himself, listen man, I'm a mufti. Listen man, I already, already got the permission to give fatawa. I mean, what am I doing here? La. He studied and he stayed with Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala for 10 years. Within these 10 years, ya akhawat, Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, he would go back to the Bedouins, stay with them for a while, learn more poetry, come back, and study with Imam Malik. And he would do this until Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala passed away. After Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala passed away, Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, he has no business in being in Medina. So what does he do? He goes back to Mecca. Now, Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala is in Mecca. He's been studying for 26 years of his life. Or he's been studying for 26 years. Yani he's 26 years old. His uncles, they told him, listen, ya Shafi'i, khalas. Yani you studied with Imam Malik for a long time. Yani you're a genius. We understand that. It's time to get money. You got to start working. He said, Tayyip, what should I do? They said, when Hajj season comes, when Hajj season comes, the mayors and the governors of يعني, the towns, inshallah, will come, will go talk to one of them. يعني, you're a Qurashi, يعني. you are from the family of the Prophet. Who's going to deny you a job? We're going to give you one of the government positions, inshallah. You're going to be a mayor of one town. That's where you go be the judge, you go do your thing. <coughs> the, governor of Mac uh, the governor of Yemen, he came to Hajj. And after he was done with Hajj, they talked to him. His uncles, Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala's uncles, they talked to the governor and they said, Listen, this is Muhammad ibn Idris al Shafi'i. We want you to take her back to Yemen, give him a city, let him be the wali. He said, Tayyip, there's a job that just opened up right now. Perfect. He can go back with me. So Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, he goes to Yemen and now he's a mayor of, town, of a town. In this town, there's businessmen and these businessmen uh, they are very 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 friendly with the mayor or whatever mayor that comes they lobby him لماذا? لأنه they want special uh, favors right? they want to control the market and in order to do that you got to be good friends with the mayor you got to tell him, hey, listen, يعني, turn the other cheek. Sometimes you just got to give him something and tell him, hey, listen, there's this business deal coming up. We need something. We need that. Bribing the mayor and breaking laws, turning the other cheek. Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, he came. And they tried to do the same thing with him. Walakin Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala wasn't having it. He said, none of that. We're going by the kitab, we're going by the rules. And none of this bribery, none of this yani, yani flattery, none of this favor. La. You do something wrong, you do something right. You play by the rules, everybody has a equal opportunity. They didn't like that. So they had to, they had to figure out a way to get Imam Shafi'i Ta'ala out. So they came together and they said, what is the best way we can get rid of Imam Shafi'i? What is the best way? They said, Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, he is a Qurashi. And Harun al-Rashid, he is the Khalifa of that time. Harun al-Rashid is also a Qurashi. These two men are cousins. Tamam? Tamam. All we have to do is send a letter to Harun al-Rashid saying that Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala he wants to overthrow your government he wants to do khuruj he's gathering a army he wants to fight and back in the days if you were heard or if it was heard that you wanted to do khuruj your head is gone what did Harun al-Rashid do? he said get him and all of his students and bring him to Baghdad so Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala chained up with his students, they go to Baghdad. He didn't do anything. So the hukum is this. 
if you stand in front of Harun al-Rashid and you want to do khuruj on him, most likely you're getting the death penalty. ولكن Harun al-Rashid, he's not a zalim. He wants to interrogate you. There's going to be an investigation. While you're being investigated, you, you will be in prison. So when he comes to Baghdad, and he stands in front of Harun al-Rashid, there's a man standing right next to Harun al-Rashid, the Khalifa. This man, his name is Muhammad ibn Hassan al-Shaybani. Muhammad ibn Hassan al-Shaybani, he is the student of the great Imam Abu Hanifa. And the position that Muhammad ibn Hassan al-Shaybani has in the, in the government now is something that they used to call back in the days, Qadi al-Qudah. Bima'na, he was the judge of the judges. Bima'na, he was the supervisor of the judges. Bima'na, he was the one that, if he said something, he goes, yani, whatever he says goes. And while he was standing right next to Imam, or while he was standing, yani Muhammad bin Hassan al-Shaybani, while, while he was standing next to Harun al-Rashid, and he sees a Shafi'i come in, he was shocked. He said, La, this is impossible. And Harun al-Rashid said, what do you mean? He says, Ya, ya Khalifa, Ya Amir al I know that man. His name is Muhammad ibn Idris al-Shafi'i. It is impossible for him to even think about khuruj. And let's pause over here. How does Muhammad ibn Hassan al-Shaybani know Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala? Where did he meet him and where did he see him? Muhammad ibn Hassan al-Shaybani, like we said, he is the famous student of Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala. Now, if you guys ever heard of anything or if you guys ever studied fiqh, you know there's a madrasa, there's a school of thought that's called Ahlul Ra'i, and there's a school of thought that's called Ahlul Hadith. The teacher or the sheikh of Ahlul Ra'i is Imam Abu Hanifa. And the sheikh of Ahlul Hadith is Imam Malik ibn Anas. Tamam? Imam Muhammad ibn Hassan al-Shaybani he was under the care of Imam Abu Hanifa to the point where Abu Hanifa one day he looked at him and he said, listen, I can't teach you anymore. Everything that I know, you have it. Until, يعني, until today, his madhab, the madhab of Imam Abu Hanifa, يعني, uh, you can say there's three imams. Abu Yusuf, Muhammad, uh, Muhammad ibn uh, Hassan al-Shaybani, and Abu Hanifa. Abu Yusuf and Muhammad ibn Hassan al-Shaybani, they are the two students of Imam Abu Hanifa, and they got to a martaba to a point where they started to give fatawa with the Imam. Bima'na, they, they were his students, and he taught them everything that he knew to the point where when he would give fatwa, they would do munadhara, they would argue, they would, they would debate, right? Because they all learned the same thing. Now they are a Quran, they're classmates now, right? Imam Muhammad ibn Hassan al-Shaybani, he goes to Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala and he studies with him for three years. And while he was studying with Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala, Imam Malik, he has a famous student. And that student is Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala. And Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala's reputation in Medina is, is out there. If you were in Hijaz, you know who Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala is. He is the student of Imam Malik. So Muhammad al-Hassan al-Shaybani, he looks at the Khalifa and he says, La, Ya Imam, I know this man. This man is not a man that thinks about khuruj. This, this, this man is not a man that thinks about overthrowing a government. He, he is a person that's focused on knowledge. Don't take him to prison. Yani, he'll be under my care. While you guys do the uh, yani investigation and while you guys got to do what you guys got to do, he stays with me. So now Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala is in Baghdad. Ya Akhwat, Baghdad was the Qibla for students of knowledge. If you were a Shaykh, if you were a Talib Ilm, if you wanted a book, if you wanted to be someone, if you wanted a special position in the government, Baghdad is the place to go. 
لماذا؟ لأن that's where بيت الحكمة is that's where the biggest library was that's where all the محدثين were that's where أهل الرأي were that's where the مناظرات the, the debates were happening that's where knowledge was and if you are somebody you were there تمام؟ Now Imam Shafi رحمه الله تعالى He studied all his life in the madrasa of Ahlu Ahlul Hadith. Now let's take a pause here. Just so you guys can understand the wada, just so you guys can understand يعني, what's going on. There's, there's this rivalry between Ahlul Hadith and Ahlul Ra'i. Ahlul Hadith, they take the Hadith, and if the Prophet sallallahu said something, they take it and they don't look left or right. لا يلتفتون يمينا ولا شمالا. ولكن أهل الرأي they they think يعني they do something that's called قياس that we're gonna learn in أصول الفقه. What did the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mean by this? طيب you see this illa right here? Yeah, let's take it over there. Let's put it over there. Let's do that and let's do this and let's stretch this hadith out and let's say this hadith is this and let يعني أهل الرأي took over Baghdad. All the judges were from Ahlul Ra'i. All the Imams were from Ahlul Ra'i. They were with Harun al-Rashid. They had all the official positions. Whereas Ahlul Hadith, لا. Imam Malik, رحمه, uh, Imam Ahmed, رحمه الله تعالى, this, one, this is when Imam Ahmed was coming up. Imam Ahmed, رحمه الله تعالى, Ishaq ibn Rahawai, Waki' ibn Jarrah, even though Waki' ibn Jarrah is from Ahlul Ra'i, Right. They, they, they were Ahlul Hadith, ولكن they were, they were small in number. When a big Shaykh from Ahlul Hadith, he comes to Baghdad, what happens? They give him a chair in the big masajid. They say, Ahlul Ra'i says, here's your chair. Sit down, tafaddal, give us a dars. He gives them a dars. They send two students to him. Okay. Once they send these two students, what do they say? Go ask this imam a few questions. Questions that we know he's unable, it is impossible for him to, uh, يعني, uh, to, to answer. And once he cannot answer this, everyone would see this imam that everybody thought he was an imam, this big scholar. He can't answer these two questions, any basic questions, therefore he's not an imam. This is what they used to do. And they're going to do the same thing to Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala once we get to the story. Walakin Imam Shafi'i, Imam Shafi'i, after studying with Malik, after being the Mufti of Hijaz, what does he do? Does he come and say, La, I want a chair? La. He wants to study the Madrasa of Ahlul Ra'i. So he studied with Imam uh, Muhammad ibn Hassan al Shaybani for five years. He took from him, studied from him, learned Muhajir al-Daqiyas, learned how to debate. Basically, he took everything from Imam Abu Hanifa's madhab. And he had everything from Imam, uh, Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala's madhab. So what did he do? He put it together. Imam Shafi rahimahullah ta'ala, and this is why I love this madhab. Imam Shafi rahimahullah ta'ala is the one that put both madrasas together and he gave us his madhab. فلذلك, that's why you always see the, the jamhur is always the, the majority position, the Shafi'is are always in it. There are only a few times where you will see a position the Shafi'is have, they're alone in it. Well, like in the majority of time, uh, of the time, the, the Shafi'is are with the jamhur. تمام؟ Now, Imam al-Shafi'i رحمه الله تعالى He took from him and he says, I, I took يعني, uh, this is a, a phrase that they used to use back in the day I took as much a, a, يعني, a, how much a camel can carry basically يعني, I took a lot of knowledge from Muhammad ibn Hassan al-Shaybani تمام؟ Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala now has his madhab. He goes back and he goes to Mecca. 
and now he has his chair. Because Makkah, he is, he is an Imam in Makkah. He has his chair. Back in the days, there wasn't YouTube, there wasn't Twitter, there wasn't Instagram, there wasn't none of that. Yani. If you were a Imam and you wanted people to know you and travel from all over the world, you had to be this great Imam. Make one YouTube video or two YouTube videos and it goes viral. Like, like you had to be this Imam where everyone says, even the uh, Imam says, okay, this guy is an Imam. So what does he do? He goes to Mecca. And he sits in Mecca. And this is a perfect place for Imam Shafi'i. Limada. Lianno the Hajj season, this is where all the scholars and all the Tulabul ilm come together. Let's say there's a scholar in Yemen. And there's a Talib from Iraq. He can't travel all the way to Yemen. So what does he do? He waits for the Hajj season. Lianno the Imam is going to come to Mecca. And this Talib, he comes to Mecca and he meets him. What do they do? He, he takes every hadith that he can from him and he goes back. So this is a place where all the ulama and all the tulab al-ilm were coming. And Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala has a chair. And now he's giving out, he's giving out his, his knowledge. Imam Ahmed Taala and his companions, some of his, his Zumala, they traveled to Mecca one time for Hajj season. They were looking for a few scholars, Abdul Zakh Sanani, they were looking for uh, Sufyan ibn Uyayna, and they came to Mecca. Now, Nowadays, when, when people go to Hajj, what is the first thing that they do? They go to the they go to the Haram and they take pictures and they go to like you know, Starbucks and have fun with my and they go here and they go there and they take a picture over there. And they meet up with these brothers and they do that. Like, back in the day, it was from Fajr all the way to Isha, Talab al-Ilmi. You look for a scholar, you sit with him, you take as much knowledge you can from the Sheikh right then and there. So Imam, uh, Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala, while he was a talib, what did he do? Him and his companions, they were in a house and they knew right after Fajr, that's when we go seek knowledge. So they go together and they're, they're walking and they're, ask, they're asking each other, okay, who are you going to go to? I'm going to go to so-and-so. Who are you going to go to? I'm going to go to so-and-so. I'm going to get this from so-and-so. I'm going to go get that from so-and-so. Like Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala, he remained silent. And after Fajr, one of the one of his friends, what did he do? He decided, yeah, I mean, this is something yeah, I mean, normal everybody does. He decided, hey, let me just go walk around. Let me see what options that I have. And let me see how many scholars are there. Let me see if I can see someone that I can that I know that I might have that. Let me just right. Let me just go walk around. Imagine the haram. While he's walking around, he notices Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala is nowhere to be seen. There's Sufyan ibn Uyayna, he looks at him, and Imam, Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala is not sitting in his halaqah. And there's another great Imam, and he sees Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala is not sitting in his halaqah. And then he walks around, and he sees Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala sitting in front of a young man. Uh, يعني, he, he was shocked. يعني. لأنه Imam, Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala left all these great muhaddithin for this guy. He said, no, there has to be something there. He comes, right? Uh, and there's a lot of people sitting around this uh, Muhammad ibn Idris al-Shafi'i and there's Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala, Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala sitting in front of him. So what does he do? He comes and he sits behind him or he sits next to him and he whispers in his ear and he says, you will leave all the muhaddithin for this guy? And then Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, he says, you know every hadith that yani, the muhaddithin have? He says, I can get it somewhere else. Yani, there's something that's called Sanadul Ali and Sanadul Nazir. He said, I can get these chains and these hadiths anywhere else. If I don't get it today, I can get it in Baghdad. I can get it over here. I can go get it in Medina. Adi. But well, he says, if I do not find, or if I imagine this knowledge this young man is giving out or producing, he says, I will never get it anywhere else. 
So his friend, he sits down and he, he listens. And he listens. He's the one that's narrating this. And he listens and he listens. And he says, Subhanallah. And he just continued to sit with him. And every single morning, he would go with Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala and they would sit in front of Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala. To the point, to the point, where Imam, Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala and it is known that he would say, any mas'ala that I do not have a dalil in, I follow Shafi'i. Tamam? Every mas'ala. I, do not, I, do, I, I don't have a dalil in, I say whatever Shafi'i says. Imam, Shaf, Imam Ahmad rahimahullah ta'ala was a Shafi'i before he, had, before he got his own madhab. Lianu, you go through a madhab first and then you become an imam. You go through a madhab first and then you become an imam. Right now we can't say Imam, Shafi, uh, imam Ahmad rahimahullah ta'ala is still a Shafi'i. La, the imam Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Yani he has his own respected madhab and he has his followers and people are hanabila, they're humbly right now. Yani the imam is Imam Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Lakin when he was coming up, when he was still a yani small time, yani, he was a Shafi'i. The same way Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala before he was anything or before Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala was before yani, a imam. He was on the madhab of Imam Malik. He was a Maliki. That's why you find the, the tarjama, the biography of Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala in Tabaqat al-Shafi'iyya. Yani the biographies of the Shafi'iyya, you find them. Tamam? This is being recorded. Tayyip. <coughs> so now, Imam... Imam Shafi'i people are talking about him now his name is being mentioned Muhammad ibn Dilis al-Shafi'i who's a Shafi'i he's not an Imam yet walakin his name is it's being talked about so now once once he yani, organized his madhab in Mecca Remember, we said if you wanted to be someone, if you had something special, huh, you had to go to Baghdad. So now he took his madhab, edited, finalized with the adilla, with his usul, he goes to he goes to Baghdad. And in Baghdad they give him a chair. <laughs> and once they gave him a chair, who did they send? They sent two students to go ask him a question, Abu Thawr and another man. And Abu Thawr, they said, oh, who's this? This is Shafi'i. Who's Shafi'i? He is a student of Imam Malik. Oh, he's from Ahlul Hadith? Yeah, he's from Ahlul Hadith. Okay. We got a couple of questions to ask him. La bas. They go to him. And they say, yeah, Shafi'i. After class, they say, yeah, Shafi'i. What is the answer to this and this and this? He gives them the answer. They ask him another question. He gives him the answer. They ask him another question. He gives him the answer. And they were shocked. Abu Thawr, he said, I became his student right then and there, Yani. Uh, forget about everything else, Yani. I am your student now. And Abu Thawr, who, whoever knows Abu Thawr, Abu Thawr is, a, he is a imam, Yani. Uh, Abu Thawr has a very, very interesting story, mashallah. Imam Ahmad rahimahullah ta'ala says, Abu Thawr is a imam. Right then and there, he said, uh, this man, yani, he's not like the others. And so now, Imam Shafi'i, rahimahullah ta'ala, his name is all over the place. People are starting, starting to hear about him. Yani, Ahlul Hadith are coming back up. Now they have pride now. Now they have, a, they have an imam now that can fight for them, that can debate for them, that, can, that they can, you know, they can ask questions to, that they can, they can ask, yani, uh, hey, listen, Shafi'i, this and this happened today. Yani, we need help with this. Yani. We need you to be Nasir al-Sunnah. We need you to, huh, to yani, help the Sunnah. To revive the Sunnah. فَلِذَلِكَ Imam Shafi'i رَحِمُهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى He was called Nasir al-Sunnah. The helper of the Sunnah. لِمَاذَا لِأَنُّ He got the Sunnah and he made the Sunnah here. Now there's a great Imam by the name of Abdurrahman ibn Mahdi. Imam Ahlul Hadith. He lived in Basra. He got into it with some guys. 
some of the Ahlul Ra'i guys. And they said, listen man, we want to debate. You have to debate us. This mas'ala, we have to talk about it A, B, C, and D. And Imam Abdurrahman Nasir, Abdurrahman Al-Mahdi, he says, Tayyib, I'll debate you guys. What I can. Give me a second. What does he do? He sends a letter to Imam Shafi'i and he says, Ya Shafi'i, listen. Write me a, write me a book. A book. Then I gotta debate these guys and the way they debate, I don't know. Right? They have rules and يعني, like, we, don't, we don't learn these type of stuff. يعني, show me how they do it. يعني, give me how they, how they debate so I can know what rules that they follow and how can I do istidlal وما إلى ذلك. Imam Shafi'i رحمه الله تعالى says, طيب. He writes him, he writes him a book. The first book to be written in Usul al-Fiqh. The science that we'll be studying, inshallah, next week. Learn the time is going time is running out. He sends him, or he writes for him this book, and he sends it to Abdurrahman al-Mahdi, and they call it al-Risala, the message. And then Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, يعني, he continued to study and uh, he continued to give his fatwa and a lot of the imma يعني, became his students to the point where Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala's madhab spread. And he was known. لماذا? لأنه if you were something in Baghdad, you were something in the Islamic Empire. If you were known in Baghdad, you were known in Egypt. If you were known in Baghdad, you were known in Khurasan. If you were known in Baghdad, you were known in Yemen. تمام؟ إمام الشافعي رحمه الله تعالى he goes and he he goes back to يعني مكة. The ulama they say when you're reading his his uh, his tariq sometimes they try to give the illa and the reason why Imam Imam Shafi رحمه الله تعالى did a few things why he traveled here why he traveled there. Well, I can after Baghdad he was gonna he was uh, he was headed to Egypt. Well, I can before Egypt he went to Mecca. And the scholars don't know why he went to Mecca. Well, I can some of them they said, yani his mother was in Mecca, so he visited his mother, yani. After Mecca, he stayed there for a while. He came to Egypt. Yani, Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, yani, was known. People knew Shafi'i was coming, Shafi'i was coming, Shafi'i was coming. So he had students prepared and everything. He came to Egypt, and what did he do? He changed his madhab. So now Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, like we're going to learn in, uh, in fiqh, he has, something that he, he has something that they call madhab al-qadim and madhab al-jadid. The old madhab and the new madhab. It's nothing, it's just a fatwa that he switched. There's some fatawa, he continued to seek knowledge, there was other adilla that he found, other ahadith that came to him that made him switch his, his position. So his old position in, uh, in in Baghdad, they call that Madhab al-Qadim. And his new position in, in Egypt, they call that Madhab al-Jadid, the new Madhab. And this is where Imam Shafi'i rahimahu Allah ta'ala, he knew what he was doing. He wrote his fiqh, he wrote his Madhab, and he has a book that's called Al-Um. Where Imam Shafi'i rahimahu Allah ta'ala's Madhab is written. This is the only madhab that we know, or this is the only madhab that you can say, Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala wrote this in his fiqh book. The other madhabs, the imams, they don't have books. They have riwayat, they have fatawa. They understand, okay, we understand from this fatwa that the sheikh meant this. Well, I can, there's another fatwa, the imam meant that. So let's put these two fatwas together. And well, I can, Imam Shafi'i, he wrote his book. Not just that, he wrote his usul, he wrote his asal, which is called Al-Risala And both books Alhamdulillah Are found So within the madhab You have Usul And Furu' And from there Imam Shafi Rahimahullah Ta'ala Had students And his students يعني, From them are Al-Muzani From them are Al-Bawiti From them are Al-Hajr uh, is the man That we mentioned last week Or yesterday يعني, uh, Rabi Al-Muradi Wa Umayr Adalik Imam Shafi Rahimahullah Ta'ala He passed away uh, the year 204 Rahimahullah And he's buried here in Egypt And his madhab is still alive
And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant him paradise And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to raise him in ranks Li'anno a lot of people worship and get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his madhab The way they pray and the way they make hajj and the way they uh, fast is through the fatawa and the understanding of Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala that is from the Salaf and he was a Salafi and he wasn't any other يعني, عقيدةً, he wasn't from Ahlul Bid'a he wasn't from those people rather he used to condemn and he hated Ilmul Kalam he hated philosophy and he hated all these men that said the Quran is makhluq and his students Imam uh, Al-Buwaiti rahimahullah ta'ala he was imprisoned and he passed away in prison because he refused to say the Quran is makhluq, that the Quran is created. The big fitna that happened that made Imam, Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala who he, who he is, Imam Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And from his students is Imam Al-Muzani rahimahullah ta'ala, the author of Sharh Sunnah, where he wrote the aqidah of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, the aqidah of the Salaf. So Imam Shafi rahimahullah ta'ala was a Salafi, and Imam, uh, Imam uh, yani his students, they were all upon the aqidah and the creed of the Salaf, Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive all of them. But we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. Whatever I said is wrong, that is from me and the shaitan. Whatever I said right is whatever I said is whatever I said that is right is from Allah and His His Messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If anybody has any questions, this is the time.